Alrighty guys, we're back for another Gruel Ballet, and this is a Wilds of Eldraine Standard Brew. We're gonna go over the deck, then hop right into some ranked, but first things first, for anyone who may not know, I'm Red Cat, and I play aggro decks and the me decks with red in them as well, so I hope that sounds fun to ya. Also, we do got that Discord link as well as that relatively new Patreon link down in the description if you're interested in joining either of those up. Okay, what do we got packed into the build here? Of course, Devilish Valet making the appearance. <laughs> it's a 3 mana 1-3 Trample Haste with Alliance, so whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, double Devilish Valet's power until end of turn. Very cool card, guys. We've built around it a ton. That's why I said another Gruel Valet, right? So what new cards do we have packed in here that should work well with Valet? Red Cap Gutter Dweller is a 4 mana 3-3 three three with Menace. And when it enters the battlefield, you create two 1-1 one, one black rat creature tokens with this creature can't block. So it's four mana, get three creatures on the board, and then trigger that alliance three times over on the valet, which is pretty cool, right? Has a bottom ability here, so at the beginning of your upkeep, you may sacrifice another creature. If you do, put a plus one plus one counter on red cap gutter dweller and exile the top card of your library. You may play that card this turn. Honestly, dude pretty solid four drop uh, it's been played against us a few times and every time it kind of felt like it was an mvp for the opponent so we'll see yeah sacrificing those cute little rat tokens to that ability could really come in handy uh, just to see more off the top right so got more new cards packed in here monstrous rage is a one mana instant speed target creature gets plus two plus oh until end of turn and you create a monster roll token attached to it and that monster roll is an aura enchanted creature gets plus one plus one and has trample nice so technically you could buff up that valet before doubling its power with that alliance so that could be pretty cool at the very least right outside of that the monster roll trample could go well on some of our other cards like the red cap gutter dweller especially if we're putting counters onto it too just like a solid card overall so <laughs> also we'll note the fact that that is a token enchantment <laughs> now we have three royal treatments in here maybe we should have four because protecting that valet is going to be very important but either way one mana instant speed i played with it a ton at this point because it's been solid dude so Target creature you control gets hexproof until end of turn. Then you create a royal roll token attached to that creature. The royal roll token is an aura, of course, and then enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one, and has ward one. Very nice, very powerful, man. I love it. Okay, more new cards. Song of Toten Tons, something like that. It's an X and a red sorcery speed. Create X11 one, one black rat creature tokens with this creature can't block. Creatures you control gain haste until end of turn, so that's pretty cool, right? So maybe we'll ramp up a little bit in this deck. We do have ways to ramp and then activate the song here for, I don't know, X is 5 or 6, and maybe the Devilish Valet. Maybe we're lucky enough to have it on the board when we drop this for X is 5 or 6 and then trigger that alliance all those times over. <laughs> Sounds pretty powerful, man. I don't think we want four of them though. I think three is a sweet spot and uh, heck, maybe only two. Uh, realistically speaking, it's a combo piece for the valet. So we'll see. Also the extra rats work well with like the red caps ability and everything too. And another card in here as well. Uh, but I want to finish going over all the new stuff first. Charming Scoundrel. Have you seen this card around yet, guys? <laughs> it's a two mana, one, one, rock and haste. And when it ETBs, you get to choose one of these. So you can discard a card, then draw a card. Okay. You can create a treasure token, so that could be really good in here. Or you can create a wicked roll token attached to target creature you control. That wicked roll is, of course, an aura. It's a token. Enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one. And when this aura is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, each opponent loses one life. Nice. The wicked rolls are actually really solid, man. Okay, that's now all the new cards. Let's go over the old stuff now. Jenny Faye, Jetmere second, making an appearance, man. Uh, while we're really, like, it's it's gruel, don't get me wrong. It kind of still feels like a splash of green. But we got, like, that double green that needs to be paid in the Jenny Faye. So uh, I, it's a little bit greedy, but the mana base should support it well enough, I would say. So this is a legendary creature. It's a 3-3. Three, three. Uh, we have all four of them because I think it's going to be important in a deck like this that's just spamming tokens onto the board. So if you would create one or more tokens, you may instead create that many 2-2 two, two green cat creature tokens with haste or that many 3-1 green dog creature tokens with vigilance. 
So that of course works with like the treasure token on Scoundrel or like the treasure token on Gallagreeters, rocking all four Gallagreeters. It always works really well with the Ginny Fey. If it's ever just like the two of them, the first thing you do on the Greeters is generate the treasure token, have it come out as a cat, then activate that alliance again, right? So uh, very, it's always been a very powerful combo between the Greeters and the Ginny Fey. And let's not forget on the Greeters, that life gain really comes in handy when we're seeing so much aggro floating about, huh? So got a little bit more ramp here at the front of the build with gold hound all four of them so it's a one mana one one first strike menace nice and then you can tap it sack it add one mana of any color that little bit of extra ramp could go a long way for like our song but also just like a solid creature in general dude first strike menace is pretty nasty and you could do things like slam a monstrous rage onto it too which um yeah that could do a lot that's a pretty powerful combat trick if the opponent does end up like double blocking this for some reason i can't imagine why they would want to but you never know right and then you know you get to keep these auras attached to it too and you know having an extra plus one plus one on a first strike menace goes a long way so we have all four commando faces kakazan in here just like the way this comes out later on as the etching and hits that board for free without paying anything and buffing the valet already it's always been a nice powerful like combo but then we know just how far commando faces kakazan actually goes in an aggro build so <laughs> i don't think we got to justify having all four of them in here huh we also have a single squee dubious monarch being able to generate more creatures on the board is kind of the whole theme of the deck man and it works really well with jenny fey too because that uh goblin swinging in um if you have it like become a 3-1 dog it's still technically swinging in and attacking correct because of how it's worded i don't know if we've ever been able to test that but that's how i've always imagined it to happen <laughs> because it creates a 1-1 red goblin creature token that's tapped and attacking and then you could just have it be a 3-1 dog instead. Yeah, pretty sure that's how that works. Anyways, guys, that's everything already. In the mana base, like I said, it's pretty greedy with, like, how Ginny Faye's mana is set up. So we have, like, a weird little splash of white in the mana base. So that way we can also play the Restless Bivouac here, uh, which is also a new card I guess we should go over. Unfortunately, it enters tapped. Uh, but it's a pretty powerful land, man. So it taps for Boros color. So we can always use that white mana in the Restless Bivouac to help cast the Jenny Fey as well, which could be cool. So for one, a red and a white, it becomes a 2-2 red and white ox creature token until end of turn. It's still a land. And then whenever it attacks, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control. So you can always put those counters onto like the Devilish Valet or something too. So that could be pretty cool, right? We have a couple uh jet mirrors gardens in here <laughs> honestly dude you never know when we end up just drawing seven out of our 22 land and maybe we'll end up cycling this out and finding one of our one drops to play and you never know that might actually win us the game right so cycling could be important it's the same concept i just wanted more dual land in here too because it, it does feel greedy and then we can always use the white source for Ginny Fay. well at that point you can use the green source too but yeah uh that's why the jet mirrors garden i think the mana is going to be very greedy again uh, Rockfall Vale, all the Carplusion Forest, all the Copperline Gourds, a single who endures leaning towards red heavily, and a couple Crucible of Defiance. I don't think the fact that this is legendary is going to hold you up too much at all. And then also just being able to generate a couple spirits just like does a lot in a deck that cares about having tokens entering, right? So a couple of the Crucibles. Got some honorable mentions over here guys this is not a gleeful demolition build although i i do know how cool that can be with devilish valet we're just trying something a little different this time same concept with the awake in the woods i know it's gruel and that would make the mana base even more greedy with the double green although i do think the way the mana is set up here it we should be fine hopefully right but yeah, no Awake in the Woods this time around. Maybe in the future. I think this belongs in more of a mid-range style valet deck anyways. So. Uh, then Become Brutes almost made the cut too. Generating a couple of the monster auras could be neat, I guess. Most of the stuff in here already has haste that we want to have haste anyways. So I don't know. It's in the honorable mentions for a reason, right? I definitely thought about it for this build. On that note, guys, I totally forgot to mention, yeah, when these come out as token enchantments, you can have those enter as creatures with the Jenny Fey uh, abilities, so that could be really cool too. I feel like I missed something else in here, but it's a relatively simple deck, so maybe we should just stop rambling and hop into some games, huh? All right, <laughs> let's go see how we do over in Ranked. All right.
right. We'll see if we can get right into that first match here. Oh, heck yeah, we do. What am I expecting from the build? <laughs> uh, as usual, I think we have to anticipate jank, but oh buddy, could this be explosive, huh? Aw, no new cards. Okay, this is still like a solid lineup though, right? We got our turn two Gala Greeters here with a turn one Jetmere's Garden not holding us up. Opponent goes first, unfortunately. All right, we'll keep this. Ooh, another Gala Greeters. That could, that could be great, man. But the way the mana has lined up, we'd probably attempt a turn three Ginny Fae. Or Fusion Forest. Okay. Let's see if Gallagreeters number one hits the board. Make disappear number one out of the opponent's deck. Luckily, we have Gallagreeters number two, and depending on what they do, maybe we just play one of our three drops instead. Mm -hmm. So they have two open, Rockfall Veil. I really don't want to lose the Ginny Fae. But yeah, maybe it's Squee. Counter on Squee isn't bad. Oh, well, it hits the board. I still think we wanted to play around a counter there, though, right? <laughs> Could be some spot removal, too. Elspeth Smite exiles it. That's a perfect target for the Elspeth Smite, man. Oh, no. Okay, Kamano. It's not bad. Not bad. This feels like a wandering emperor we should play this as a land because i feel like we want as much land down as possible and i want gala greeters and charming scoundrel here let's see what they end up doing if it's a wandering emperor then they probably plus for a creature block the one one fortunately we don't have any tricks in our hand to help us around that but Yeah, some tough decisions here, man. No Wandering Emperor. Okay. We have to anticipate a counter spell. Okay, Gallagreeters, let's see if you land. It's a make disappear. I might pay the two. Okay, Gallagreeters on the board. Commando to play around a board wipe or Charming Scoundrel. Get a couple treasures. I don't even know if that's the most ideal thing as well. Alright, treasure and then treasure on the Gallag readers, right? Treasure, treasure means that if it is a board wipe, yeah, we're not investing on the creatures on the board. Instead, we're investing in our hand. Oh, we could also use that treasure to play the commando, get the ball rolling there. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, that's actually pretty good because next turn we could get that plus one counter on the valet too. At this point now I do I feel like I'm oh memory deluge yeah so they could find the board white dude control why control why it's still it's a solid board white to get rid of three creatures here oh no board white guys wow uh, that could be huge for us man because the gala greeters well now we don't have the six mana to play both of these things though <laughs> <laughs> and another three drop isn't like the greatest either. Is it Ginny Fay or Valley number one? We have two open for a, like a make disappear, and then we full swing. We probably grab the treasure off the Gala Greeters. Okay, Valley number one over the Ginny Fay. Because then we'll have six mana available for next turn, potentially, to do a little bit more here. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like I could have played this out in a way that let us play things out better. Does that make sense? I, I could have ordered things a little bit better here. Oh, quick study. Okay. Okay, so treasure for the sake of playing for next turn. I think that's totally fine. Getting a little bit of damage through. Not terrible. Now the board wipe is looking very impressive for the opponent. Oh, especially if it's like a farewell, dude. Farewell hits artifacts and enchantments too. Why, why am I just now thinking that it could be farewell? 
<laughs> it's not. We, they uh, don't flash it out because if they flash it, that'll come out tap. This card looks sweet, by the way. Uh, okay, so... Oh, oh, oh. Right. So we're going to start with the plus one counter because we want Ginny Faye to be on the board for when the treasure enters. I guess we start with Valley number two and just try to push all that extra damage through. Guys, did we get lucky without the board wipe happening here? Ginny Faye wants to be on the board. Oh, please let me attack opponent, please. Please, this is so cool. Since this tap we go. <laughs> yes! Look at that ballet, dude! Look at that ballet! <laughs> Let's go, guys! What a first game! How lucky did we get not running into a board wipe? Probably pretty lucky, I would say. <laughs> Uh, because, like, that Gallagreeters really wanted to be on the board there. And, for that matter, the uh, Valet to begin with, right? The, the first Valet sticking on that board for when Etching flipped and everything. Oh, man. This is why I need to take less time going over the build and just let the build speak for itself. Because this kind of did everything I said whenever I was going over the deck anyways, right? So, <laughs> that was awesome, man. I can't be... I, I, I'm, yeah, I could not be happier with the first game. Let's keep going. Maybe we can uh, pop up a little bit more with Ballet, huh? Get a ridiculous one. Maybe uh, as, as long as we see like one of the songs, then yeah, we totally could. That would have been a match where we could have went song for five since we had six mana off the treasures. Okay, no new cards again, but in our opener, but um good hand, right? Turn one Kamano, turn two Gallagreeters. Turn three Squeak. Yeah, dude, that's a lineup, man. Alright. Funk goes first again. Yeah, it is unfortunate. But we should be fine and dandy. Opponent, are you there, buddy? Are you there? Oh, I added uh, a button here. I actually added a button to where I can pause the recording. I can try that right now until the opponent arrives. Let's see if it works. I, I might as well, right? Okay, the opponent has arrived. I think the pause button worked. <laughs> that could come in handy. Since I like to uh, sit down and record all in one go without cutting any games and whatnot, a, a pause button can really come in handy. Hmm. Upper Nine Gorge, Commando. Nothing changes based on the blue source. The Gallagreeters number two is a good draw. Showed that last game, right? A couple Gallagreeters since the first one ate the make disappear. And it could be the exact same line of play here. Rona! Okay. Oh, Red Cap Gutter Dweller. Nice. Solid draws so far. All right, turn three is looking nasty, dude. Kamano flips, probably counter on the greeters. Rockfall Veil, Squee, Treasure. If the Squee su successfully can swing in, then another creature hits the board. We can gain some life off of greeters too. We're getting all three Alliance abilities next turn if the Squee hits the board. Up for the Rona right out the gate here. Discard an Urtai Resurrected. Found their third. All right. Up against okay, Rona untaps. Up against some Esper Legends, it looks like, huh? Okay, fourth mana's not bad. Hey, we're drawing really well, dude. Okay, counter. Thalia blocks Squee really well, so is it worthwhile? playing Squee and Swinging, or do we just want to, like, play Gallagreeters number two and prepare for the red cap next turn? Because if we go Greeters number two, we can start getting these Greeters above... above their creatures and potentially above their removal, too. I don't think they would end up 
blocking here too. I'm going to try to squeeze three damage through for the turn because I think that could really matter. Nice. Okay. Uh, and then we're going to hold back the squee for now and we're going to, yeah, we're just going to be greedy with it, man. Let's get that treasure token. We don't need the life right now. That little bit of ramp can really come in handy because next turn then we can go Kamano and Squee on the same turn since the Thalia is taxing the Kamano. But for the draw and discard, Rona is a solid card, dude. <laughs> but you guys know how I love filtering effects. Sometimes, like, you just draw so poorly and filtering just completely balances that. You know what I mean? So it's it's hard not to love filtering effects. Old Rutstein. Oh my, this is like a four color legends. <laughs> that's, that's cool, opponent. That's cool. Okay, shield a pain in the butt, but ballet. Ooh, okay. Okay. This comes down. Yeah, Red Cap can immediately just trigger all three of the abilities on both greeters, but I don't know if that's what we want to do now that we see the Valet. We go like Kamano, and we get Valet down and ready. We'll get two more treasures. We're spending one. If we see land off the top, we could do both of these next turn. Problem is, I feel like Valet is going to get picked up pretty easily. In a Legends build, they run like Seat of the Empire a few times over. So maybe we don't go Treasure Tokens here. No, we're going to go Treasure Tokens. I think investing in the mana could be huge now that Valet is on the board. We see like Song off the top or something. We waited for Valet next turn. It does have haste but then we don't get the benefit if we are able to cast Squee on the same. But we would have gotten a counter from the Kamano too. Hmm. Maybe a little bit of a different order here. It's not like we could have utilized the haste on the Squee either though, so we could have. We could have swung in, got an extra creature. They would have blocked both of them. We could have activated the Galagreeder's abilities a few times over. Three cards in hand, filter out, try to find removal for the valet probably, because they, they're probably anticipating us popping off with the valet. Um, a draw that buffs the valet too could be really good, right? Monstrous Rage, valet, get it up to like four, uh, four power, right? And then drop the red cap and then double it three times over <laughs> uh, that could be really good as long as the seat of the empire doesn't pick it up right Ooh, Ooh that's a good draw too bad thalia is taxing it though so if we do x is four if we do x is four it's not that crazy if we wait and we just play red cap for the turn, grab two more treasure tokens. <laughs> I'm gonna try to get a little silly with this song. I'm really anticipating a seat of the empire though, unfortunately, but yeah, we'll see. Treasure token, treasure token. Red cap gutter dweller could be absolutely incredible here. Oh, oh, that's getting loud. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. I hope that's not too loud. Okay, so it's an it's an eight three that probably gets picked up by seat right away. Could attempt the swing. They got double blocks. They can block with shielded. We're, we're just gonna get greedy with it, man. I'm gonna hold back. <laughs> no attacks. Rona can help them filter further, unfortunately. But yeah, next turn, Kamana flips, that doubles Valet right away. Then we go Song for six? It's too bad that Thalia is there and we could go Song for seven. Uh, Red Cap can help us see more off the top. Rafine's in the grave. Wow. Wow. There's an Abandoned Mire. Oh, it was a simple go for the throw. I was thinking the whole time it was going to be a Seat of the Empire, just based on the deck, but... 
Well, I'm sad now, guys. Hey, this still gives our creatures haste for the turn, though, so we could still have a really big swing. Bro, what on earth is even happening? A cool, cool deck opponent. It's like, it's the Esper Legends, but with that splash of green. It might be more than a splash of green, but it looks like a splash of green. Yeah, just four color legend. <laughs> the Malira, dude. This is awesome. Very cool. All right. Counter on the red cap, better dweller. The menace is pretty good. Who endures? Dude, nice. Oh, Ginny Bay. Wow. Wow. Start with the counters, right? I mean, we're going to go for the full swing for the turn. Who endures as a land? One, two, three. We could go X is four, get some kitty cats instead of rats, right? And they all get haste anyway. So we could get, we could go for dogs. Creatures you control gain haste until end of turn. That seems good. I'm going for the full swing this turn, guys. It's, it's too bad that the valley is gone, but this is like a really, really good full swing. <laughs> Um, treasure token, fine, treasure token, and then we'll go for dogs. They come out tapped anyways, so the haste won't matter. Well, the alliance is popping off, dude, my goodness. All right, X is four. Watch is just like a make disappear. Is something really simple as their last card? No? Okay, vigilant dogs, but they all get haste. <laughs> Full swing, go, go, go. Math is for blockers. They got great blocks here. Um, the red cap's probably getting through. Let's see what they end up discarding here. Oh, uh, land. Okay. Slow Gurk getting that buff. Ginny Faye's out of the equation. The 3 3 Gala Greeters is out of the equation, right? Um, Yeah, they, they have good blocks. I would say for these for these three cards like the they could take out one of the three ones with the first strike take less damage or one of the etchings so this is what we got four three ones getting through we have a five two five fives getting through as well <laughs> but yeah no it's like i said they still have really good blocks here -hoo -hoo! oh the two two and the one one getting through they're down to three <laughs> We're going back up to two here, though. Or, um, they're gaining two. Back up to five. Rona gains them two more. Back up to seven. They could play a legendary. Dude, Shieldred's nasty, man. Holy cow. Hopefully the full swing next turn can still get us there. Gotta remember, Skrelv can't block. And we're gonna have two more three ones that are untapping. And Squee. Like, Squee's still a solid card. Going uh, extra wide here. Red Cap has that menace too, so I'm feeling pretty good about this one. The opponent needs to have something extreme here, like untapping that Rona again. If they activate the Rona ability, it looks like that full swing. All right, we're just gonna go no blocks here. Good game, opponent. Let's go, guys. <laughs> in those two, in those two games, the deck felt relatively consistent. Um, but you know, it's, you know, it's still probably leaning towards the jank, right? So let's, let's continue forward. We're probably getting a little lucky, especially again, like that first game, the opponent not getting a board wipe there was so huge for us, man. In that game, we were just like really applying pressure, which was awesome. It's too bad we couldn't see that valet just go crazy though, that game. They had the go for the throat for it. You know what, man? I'm gonna give it a shot. I think this actually looks like a solid hand, funny enough. No turn one, I'm just gonna get the veil down. Mountain. Okay. Probably, I don't think we want the treasure token right now. I think we go for the wicked roll. See if it's like a play with fire. That would be a play with fire that's not hitting our face, guys. Which, uh, yeah, I mean, two damage off of our face isn't terrible. If we want treasure token, I guess 
would have been a little bit less of a greedy play then, but I don't know. Should be fine. Royal Treatment. I'm gonna wait a turn before playing Ballet. That Royal Treatment open. If we go Treasure now... Now, I think the best bet is gonna be to try to outpace them over the ramp since we already have four mana and another charming scoundrel if we want to treasure there too so a lot of little decisions strangle on the scoundrel royal treatment available all right goodbye scoundrel i'm keeping that royal treatment for our valet man oh <laughs> uh, we're gonna need it because burn feed lots and lots of burn down to 14. Should be scary. Ginny Bay. Woohoo! Okay. So, Crucible. Is it going to be Ginny Fay now instead? And keep Royal Treatment open for the Fay? Uh, Valet. Okay. Ginny Fay was a good draw. Oh, no, no. Yeah, see, we won't be able to keep Treatment open because of the uh, all the green sources we have to play. So, yeah. Keeping protection open for a creature is more important than trying to set up something here, I would say. Because I think sometimes these decks run two strangles too, so. Burnish Punisher. Yep, we're about to get punished by that too, so. <laughs> I guess more mana off the top wouldn't be a bad thing. Uh, or another mountain in this deck. Really, keeping Royal Treatment open didn't do anything. Down to eight. Mano. We can't get the valet above the 3-3 three, three Furnace Punisher. I still want to keep Royal Treatment open regardless. So we're just going to go into that Scoundrel and put that aura, I guess, onto the valet. That way we can get a successful swing here. How do we feel about that, guys? Because now if we go Royal Treatment and have to protect it, Oh, we're gonna die next turn though. Furnace Punisher goes in. Oh, we're, we're like dead, aren't we? You know what? I'm swinging. We're going for it, man. Punisher gets through with its menace. Uh, we can block one of the adversaries. We take two from the Punisher's ability at the beginning and then they just like burn our face anyways. The reason we still swing here is because it could be like double lightning strike or something. Oh, yeah, no, that works too. Grab a play with fire, smack our face, fool swing. <laughs> Um, I don't even think there is, like, a more optimal way to play this one out. Uh, that I think we were in danger regardless. Going for the strangle. Huh. We might be alive here. Because we can block the 3-3. Three, three. No, no, we're still taking 7. Yeah, they, they, it still has haste, so. Taking 7, then Furnace Punisher does us in. Every single, hey, good game opponent. Every single time we've seen Furnace Punisher, we've been punished by it. <laughs> it's like, it's solid, dude. A lot of people don't have that many, like, basics in their deck. So, <laughs> uh, love the addition, man. Very cool. Looks like we're one win away from getting back up to Platinum finally. So, hey, let's try to do that today, huh? We're 34 minutes in. Probably have time for one more. I'm feeling good, man. I'm feeling good. There was probably an order in the last game that we could have we could have potentially played it out in a different order. Going for treasure on that first scoundrel was probably a better bet than the wicked roll. My first thought was, oh, we got to try to outpace mono red, and there's a possibility where we can do that. Uh, but them having that open red source that probably just wasn't the best bet. Just going treasure, getting some more mana value and ramp off of that it's probably a lot of better of a play i don't know if we'd still be in that game had i have done that but still all right i like it dude let's keep this mm, we're gonna go we're gonna skip the jetmere's garden we're gonna go right into that gold hound actually i'm gonna go yeah i'm gonna go gold hound i'm gonna go gold hound because it depending on what we draw like a turn two Ginny Fey, for example, could be really good. 
get that ball rolling. Oh no, more mono red. Yeah, no, we're probably in trouble here. All right. Another valet. We we do have a turn two valet, but against mono red, dude, it dies like immediately, right? So gonna stick to the original plan. Gonna get that commando down. I am gonna swing because uh, gold pound isn't blocking terrifically here. Now we do have the epic here. Okay, and the festivities gets rid of gold hound. That's a shame. Swing for two, down to 15. It's not the fastest lineup that red could have seen, so it's not too bad. Okay, more mana. That's good. I was going to say we had the option between red cap or the valet, but the gold hound ended up dying to the end of the festivities, so now it's just valet. And maybe it survives, and we can drop that red cap next turn. Uh, let's see, it'll double three times, so it'll be four, eight, then 16. So a bird is Punisher. <laughs> wait, wait a minute, dude. Oh, it doubles from the Kamano. Guys, did we just win? Look at this, dude. Look at this. Look at how this lined up. Holy cow. Holy cow, bro. <laughs> dude, opponent, please let me swing, please. Yes. 32-4. Good game, buddy. Yes. <laughs> oh, man. When they tapped out there, I, like... First of all, it's pretty hard for Mono Red to do 4 damage sometimes, depending on the deck, right? Yes, look at this. Guys, back up to Platinum. Easy peasy. <laughs> uh, this... This was a good time, man. The The last few decks that I made for videos, I've just been having a freaking blast, man, with Eldraine so far. I hope you guys have been enjoying it as well. Uh, let's go over the deck list again. We're about 37 minutes into the video. Hopefully, whenever I tested out the pausing earlier, I didn't like... That was the first time I tried the pausing. Hopefully, I'm not like still paused here or something. Guys, look at that. I got, I got my um, fourth Virtue of Courage. That's good. That'll come in handy in a, in a build somewhere. Here's the deck list again. Okay, dude. Yeah, four mana, get three creatures, and then also it's just like a solid creature. Red cap, gutter dweller, keep your eye on this, dude. I don't know where it belongs, but it seems to belong in here quite well, huh? Got to see the uh, songs come into play, or Song of Totentons here come into play with the Ginny Fey that one game. How fun was this, man? The three royal treatments was good i mean obviously when we saw it it came in handy like it does protect creatures effectively um we didn't get to see like the monstrous rage and the royal treatment do too much today but i do like the three of both of them still they get to see gold hound do too much today either and it's definitely something to note too um as i i see this every now and then like why didn't you tap gold hound to play this uh, if you do tap down gold hound and sacrifice it i mean it needs haste <laughs> Uh, so you can't just like play Gold Hound and then activate the Valet and then play a second Gold Hound on the same turn. So, I mean, in this deck, though, since cards like Song of Totentons, uh, creatures you control gain haste until end of turn. I mean, technically, you could play like Gold Hound and then have a little bit of mana for like, I don't know, X's 2, depending on how much mana you have. And then give the Gold Hound haste and then play Gold Hound number 2, right? Or, yeah, uh, instantly use that. Uh, treasure which is something i didn't think about especially when going over the deck there the one squee was fine i do like the four Ginny face but i know it's legendary so you could go down to three what would you go up more removal man i i know i know i never have enough removal in my builds but i mean this deck is obviously just trying to do a thing and it's trying to do the thing faster than the opponent so we're just not focused on removal right uh actually we don't have any removal in classic red cat fashion, I completely skipped the removal in the build, but I mean, we did a thing, man. It felt good, and we, yeah, we in that last game, we showcased how we're, we are trying to go a little bit faster than mono red, too, sometimes. 
<laughs> that's funny dude anyways yeah so if you drop a Ginny Fei, you can go up some removal and preferably if you can find like a removal piece that somehow works with like the alliance i don't know what it would be i can't think of anything right now but that would be the removal to go up outside of that just like doing damage to the opponent's face works too man so like lightning strike a couple of those could go a long way if you drop a Ginny Fei. and like i could see dropping a monstrous rage too down to two Although I do think that in a few of those games, if we had seen this, maybe things would have ended up ending a little bit faster too. I mean, buffing the valet by the three with the instant speed monstrous rage. And I, I mean, you could buff it by two and one. And then like while that token is coming out, you could use that Jenny Fey, have it come out as a kitty cat instead of a monstrous. No, no, I like the three monstrous rage. Never mind. I talked myself out of it. So yeah, maybe go down one Ginny Fang, go up one piece of removal. Outside of that, I think the deck is totally fine. It's probably still janky regardless of how good we did today, right? <laughs> um, I do feel like we got just a little bit lucky in some of those games. Other than that, it just lined up really nicely, man. So I didn't mind the Jetmere's Garden at all. We didn't get to see Restless uh, Bivouac. I like the splash of white in the mana base. I think it totally works since we're trying to cast out that Ginny Fang anyway, so... Yeah, I like this one, guys. I like the double crucibles, too. Again, I don't think the legendary is going to hold you up as much as just you wanting to see some extra spirit tokens. Gallag Readers, underplayed, bro. The problem is it dies to everything, but when it doesn't, it just pops off to a ridiculous amount, and it's very hard for your opponent to keep up with. Um, I could see this deck fizzling out sometimes, as there's not a lot of card draw, or um, outside of the red cap gutter dweller, right, on the top end of the build here. Um, I, there's, like, filtering with Charming Scoundrel, but that's not really what you want to do with the Scoundrel in this build either, so. Well, yeah, now, hey, enough rambling, huh? Let me know what you thought of the build down in the comments. Um, if you made it this far into the video for real, y'all are champions. I super duper appreciate you, and I will see you in the next video.